Hello everyone. This is me Ayush along with Samriti presenting our XV6 OS assignment. And uh, we were given the task to implement one of the caching techniques in the XV6 OS. So let's first give you a brief introduction about XV6. So XV6 was a model OS developed by MIT for one of its course regarded regarding software engineering and it was developed in 2006 and it is just like any operating system like windows or mac os x or ubuntu for that purpose and has all the core functionalities of memory mapping thread manipulation process system calls cpu scheduling and etc it just does not have that kind of user experience as is with many popular os that we know so going to our task so we have to be implementing a direct memory mapping technique for the cache. Currently we have associated memory mapping which is provided for in the XP6 OS. So the origin as you can see as I told you it was a basic MIT developed OS. And just like any other OS has some basic functionalities. So a bit of background over the mapping techniques. So the associative mapping, it is just a very basic form of cache mapping. What it does is it has a various number of memory blocks available to it. And then on the basis of whatever blocks are free, it just completely starts to fill the cache from one end to the other. So if a block is coming to the cache, then it will fill the first block first, then the second and so on, till the number of available blocks in the cache, and then starts replacing in the same order. So the associative mapping is good because we don't have to implement any kind of mapping function plus the entire cache is used altogether. So the utility of the cache increases. But at the same time for picking out any element, we don't know exactly where that element is inside the cache. So we have to search for it through the cache. So that increases the access time for the element already present in cache to a linear O n time in the bigger notation if we can explain in that sense. The direct memory helps us in that aspect. It saves us the access time because it has predefined location for each memory access. So if a block number let's say 100 is going in a cache of size 30, then we will do 100 more 30 and the block will go to the cache location 10 and so on. So this means that we already have a predefined location of every memory element in the cache but what we don't have is the complete utility of the cache so in some senses we are weighing out the pros and cons depending on our purposes so our approach so the entire file structure of the xv6 os that we are provided with there's a file called bio.c which is the main implementation of the cache it has all the codes regarding the cache and as far we have seen it is currently implemented in a linked list format where it has the next element to it the last element associated with it and so on as it as we try to add more and more elements to it the size of the cache dynamically grows and it has various flags associated with it like excuse me b underscore busy b underscore valid and b underscore dirty they respectively denote the current state of a memory element in the cache it might be busy that it is being used by any other element it might be valid that is it is valid for a read and be dirty that means the valid uh, value associated with that memory is currently not good for read because it might be associated with a newer value which might be in some other location and may not have been updated as yet and it has been seen that these three flag help us in many aspects and give the status to the structure of the cache. So now we'll move on to the codes that we have regarding this. So this is one of the basic files which has various headers associated with it. So here we can see that fs size is the size of the file system blocks in the main our drive as we see that is in the secondary memory and just so you know that this cache is being implemented between the main memory and the secondary memory so 
the size of the blocks is therefore more than what is being implemented in the primary cache that is between the processor and the main memory so we see the maximum open block being 10 for each so we see that each of the block size is 30 now we move on to the next file buff.h which holds the structure of the entire buffer memory unit that is the cache so as we see that this is the structure of the buffer which is one unit in the cache so this is a flag which tells what is the current status of the memory unit then the block number decides what's its number in the entire cache then we have these three pointers associated with it which show which is a doubly linked list so it shows the previous the next pointers in the and the third one for the disk queue and this is where our actual data will be going these are defined in some of the other files which i will not go into the details of so this is one of the original files bio.c which has not been edited yet so as we see so same this one is the original file and this one is acquiring a lock over one of the blocks of the cache so that it is not being read by two processes at one time and if we go further down we see that this is a write function which writes the actual value in the memory unit in this original file we see that we have acquired a lock we have initialized it first and then we move on to creating a link list which will be holding all the cache data so this is the original bio.c file and then we move on to the next part of it that is acquiring a lock over this memory unit in the cache and then going through all the elements and seeing that if some of the memory units are empty or not if they are empty then we directly go and write to it if not then we see the most least recently used memory unit in it and then we erase and overwrite over that so this is a simple functionality of this associative mapping if we move on to our own structure so here after acquiring a lock for a memory unit we see that we have not created any kind of link list earlier we are working on an array right now so after acquiring a lock we calculate the block number where it would be going inside the cache and after that we just directly read from it and return the buffer data that's how it is and if we go on to seeing the structure this is how it started and currently it's working this way so I think every of the functionality is working right so we see that we have been successfully able to complete this memory mapping and since the code is compiling and all the files are being generated so we assume that all the implementations are working right was the Ayush who was presenting it. Uh, the presentations and the code have been prepared by Samriti Jain alongside in my team. Thank you.